On today's episode of Mile Higher, the UFO congressional hearing. Three individuals claiming to have witnessed UFOs are testifying in an historic hearing on Capitol Hill today. It contains a number of bombshell allegations about a U.S. cover-up of a secret crash retrieval program, as well as the existence of aliens. Do you think humanity could honestly take it? Everything we know about everything, why we're here, who we are, could be completely flipped upside down. But now it freaks me out more than ever, especially now that we have a child, because I think about the real implications of how it would change my life. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. Is this just the government misleading us and preparing us for something else that they have planned? I mean, who really trusts the government at this point? Are there really people out there that are like, oh yeah, they're telling us thousand percent the truth? He basically confirms that we are not alone in this universe. Hey, what's up, everybody? Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 264. I'm your host, Josh. Oh, and I'm Kendall. What's welcome. up? We're going to start saying our names now, so you guys know who we are. That's also, good. episode 264, we fucked up last week. I fully blame Janelle. Thank I you. I said 160, or 262. Mm -hmm. It is not. It's because that one time you just insisted on not saying it in the episode. You insisted, <laughs> excuse me, and the people let you have it. Yeah, they did. We're going to say the episode numbers and our names from now on. You guys know what's going on. And today's very exciting. You guys have requested us like crazy to talk about the UFO congressional hearing, our thoughts on it, kind of break it down because there's a lot of boring shit in there, you know, how there Congress is. is. So lots of boring mm -hmm, talk going mm -hmm. on, but there's a lot of juicy stuff in there. So we're going to be going over all of it today. A lot of it is things that we've talked about on the show over the years. So now confirmed, confirmed by at least those that have worked in the intelligence community within the government, and the military mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and things are starting to unravel. Yep. You know, we, we started this podcast, what, four or five years ago? Uh -huh. We've been talking about UFOs pretty much since the beginning. Almost five years. And it's been really, I was just thinking about today, it's been really fun to kind of look back and think about mm -hmm. all of the different conversations that we've had over the years. And we look a lot less crazy we now. We do. We do. Suckers. The masses are starting to get on board with what's going on. I know many of you are very skeptical about what's being said and, and mm -hmm. some of the, Fair enough. the big big reveals that have, have mm -hmm. happened and i get it because you know there's there's a general mistrust with the government and that's that's fair it's i would good. say it's, and it's good to good to have some skepticism because i think none of us are going to 110 percent believe in ufos aliens whatever this other intelligence that seems to exist in the universe until we experience it firsthand for ourselves am i right like i think yeah. everybody here would say yes mm -hmm. to that yeah. Like we're all like, eh, you know, like maybe we're 90%, but then there's like 10% where like, is this just the government misleading us and preparing us for something else that they have planned? Or is what we heard from whistleblower David Grush actually true? Yeah. Now this happened um, last Wednesday. Yep. The 26th. Well, but by the time you guys see it, it's going to be two weeks ago yes um we do record our episodes a week in advance and last week when we were recording this all was going down yep. so we kind of caught up after we finished but yeah I'm but a lot to, to unpack here yes let's get to unpacking so we have to start by talking about david grush and many of you out there may not even know who he is why do we care about what he's saying well let's break it down for you who is David Grush? So David is 36 years old. He's from a blue collar family in Pittsburgh, and he had always admired men in uniform and wanted to grow up to be one. He served for 14 years as an intelligence officer in the Air Force and the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. He came to the hearing as a whistleblower. Basically gave it all up. Mm, he did. A lot on the line. Oh, him. yeah. Which like, I think life, you have to take so. into account. Like, it's pretty... Pretty big mm -hmm. deal that he did this and he was willing to come forward. Big balls. Yeah, yes, very big balls. Very proud of him. Mm -hmm. 
He is a decorated officer with a degree in physics, and he was a career intelligence officer. Then he spent time in Afghanistan as a combat officer and in other places that he can't name, which I thought was quite interesting. And then he went back to Washington in an intelligence role. He had a very high security clearance. He had passed multiple polygraphs to get his clearance. And because of this clearance, he could be read into any program. In his last position, which he left in April of 2023, so very recently, he co-led the UAP portfolio for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Top officials from the Department of Defense and Intelligence Community would ask David to advise them on, quote, some of the hardest target sets that the country had. He was highly trusted in the DOD and intelligence community, and he was trusted with very sensitive secrets. So just based off of that, I think it's very obvious that he knows some shit, right? Yeah. And I tend to believe a lot of what he's saying. I really do. I I feel that we can trust him to a certain extent. Obviously, it's okay to have some skepticism, but I do think that I mean, they want to throw him in jail. They want to yeah. make him disappear. And he's even said that he's been worried about threats on his life, things like that. I mean, this is a, I mean, to be a whistleblower in general is a very risky, risky move. But I mean, I think, I think what he's, what he's saying is it's got a lot of truth to it. Yeah. I really do believe him especially after listening to him, not only in the hearing, but the News Nation interview, which, first of all, shout out to News Nation. They are doing what no other news network is doing out there. They've managed to be bipartisan and also cover the things that other news agencies just straight up are afraid to cover or Or they don't because... dive into on a real level. No, like they, no. like they sugarcoat it or yes. they have a narrative that they're trying to spin. Well, News Nation was the only one covering it when it was happening the hearing itself during it live which it's like such a massive event i was really shocked that well i guess i shouldn't be shocked right they're all owned by the the same people the corporate that's the thing though is like the parent companies you have to mm -hmm. look at that there is mm -hmm. connections there well news nation is doing a lot especially in the true crime community too brian Enton, news daddy <laughs> i love him personal friend right yeah, we've dm'd a few times yeah, there you go. I love me some Brian. So anyways, this all stems from an interview News Nation did in June of 2023 with David and Ross Coulthart. And this interview is what really broke the internet, really just put this whole issue on the map for everybody. It contains a number of bombshell allegations about a U.S. cover-up of a secret crash retrieval program, as well as the existence of aliens and David makes a point of saying that he doesn't he doesn't call them aliens. He calls them it's some sort of intelligence mm -hmm. that we know nothing about. Like there's something here. It's not necessarily extraterrestrials from other planets or star systems, but there's some type of intelligence behind these craft mm -hmm. and bodies potentially. So in this interview, he basically confirms that we are not alone in this universe. And I think we all have been under yeah. The belief that that is the case it's too big of a universe for us to be the only ones here it'd be mm -hmm. such a weird thing if we were the only right? intelligent beings in the entire expanse of the universe to believe that yeah like most I, rational people logical people would agree that we can't possibly be alone in the fucking universe but no yeah now we have it confirmed but let's roll the clip of what david had to say about that yeah lots of clips today I want you guys to hear it right Yeah, we got here. the best nuggets from all these clips, so best I'll have nuggets. to sit through the two-hour-long hearing. Mm -hmm. You are saying to the human race, for the first time, an official intelligence representative at a high level from the U.S. government is saying publicly, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of well naturally um when you recover something that's either landed or crashed um sometimes you encounter um dead pilots and uh, believe it or not as fan as fantastical as that sounds it's true it's it really doesn't sound that fantastical to me it seems extremely obvious it does and i, I like the way that he 
he words all of his answers. He's clearly a very mm -hmm. smart guy. And he's just, I like how he's just like cutting through the bullshit and just giving us mm -hmm. what he can. Obviously, there's a lot of things he can't reveal yeah. because of, you know, classified information. And, you mm -hmm. know, he doesn't want to be in prison for the rest of his life. But <laughs> I mean, he basically says it right there. He says he hasn't seen any photos of these dead pilots, but he has talked with people extensively who have seen them. Mm -hmm. And people in different, inter in, you know, without being in the same room and they have the same information. And these are high, high level yeah. individuals within these programs that, mm -hmm. that he was a part of. Mm -hmm. And he also confirms what we all have believed, at least, you know, if you're a fan of the show, that the American people have been lied to for decades about the UFO issue. And there's been a major disinformation campaign at work. And I believe it's still at work to try and now mitigate some of the damage that's, you know, being caused to, to the government and this distrust that's continuing to grow mm -hmm. because they've literally been lying to us about this for what uh, almost 100 yeah. years i mean who really trusts the government at this point are there really people out there that are like oh yeah they're telling us a thousand percent the truth i'm sure we know everything some that they do people out there i wouldn't say everybody mistrusts i know but, but like, a large it's majority of really sure. small percentage of people that actually trust our government could say that they trust them or feel like we're not being lied to i think it's generally accepted that we've been lied to about many things not just and, and it confirms and, all of our suspicions that mm -hmm. there are these top secret programs that many of our elected officials are absolutely clueless about they are not given out including the president they are mm -hmm. not given access to to what these programs are what they're doing i mean as we've talked about in the past the pentagon the amount of money the pentagon gets and spends is astronomical and we don't know where that money comes from they've never passed an audit nope they've never passed an audit and we have as american taxpayers we have no idea where this money's going and where it's being spent and now we know the there are these top secret black ops programs whatever whatever you want to call them that do exist within within the united states government military and lo and behold they were doing crash retrieval operations mm -hmm. of of these downed craft uh, crafts that mm -hmm. have landed on our planet. one thing that really stood out to me in his interview too is when roswell was brought up specifically he made a face that looks like he's acknowledging that it's true yeah. um, that we've been lied to about it and then he says that he can't speak specifically about it which i mean pretty much gives it away why wouldn't he be able to talk about something that's confirmed because it's been like proven to be debunked so many times well so many of these events have been proven to be debunked yeah. but and actually he, he said that true. their uh, report on it was just a hack job that was the words he used that it was just absolute lies all strung together to convince the public that nothing to see there so the loonies that believe I know. in roswell get your tin hats which is it's so funny because there's literally like the roswell daily record literally mm -hmm. put an article that said that ufo debris was retrieved mm -hmm. and then the military came in and tried to cover it all up saying it was a weather balloon and that yeah. oh they were just dummies that mm -hmm. you know we were doing this test on high altitude balloons or whatever and you know that's <gasps> so what we ridiculous. recovered and then they made made the army the military officers that were actually there like pose for photographs and stuff to, mm -hmm. to make it seem like oh everything's under control but mm -hmm. i mean i'm i've been a believer in roswell since since i learned about it i mean it's yeah. so obvious that, it is. that something happened that day and, mm -hmm. and it was something extraordinary that just set everything in motion because if you think about the military got access to this technology that crashed here and potentially the pilots as well they have had a very very long time to study this this materials the the remnants of the craft to try and understand what what's going on with it how are they piloting this where they come from mm -hmm. and so if you think about all the years that they've had to study this in, in relative secret, obviously, there's always been people saying that, oh, the military has this, you know, Bob Lazar in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and now we're, I, I think this coming out gives Bob Lazar a lot of credibility oh, yeah. as well. Like, it gives many people so much more credibility. I'm sure there's so many of them that are just celebrating and feel validated. Right. And so David has kind of become this beacon of, of hope for, for many because mm -hmm. as he's coming forward and, you know, starting to talk about what's actually going on in these secret programs. Of course, there's other people that are still in these programs that he says that have approached him and given him information. And so he's actually seen documents and, and 
proof that this you know ufo retrieval program actually exists and they've actually been doing this for a very long time and so let's let's play a clip where he's talking about his time on that uip task force he was on and actually retrieving non-human craft based on my formal security clearance and multiple polygraphs i had the ability uh, to be read into any program that I needed. At one point in time, I was extremely highly cleared. What conclusion did you come to at the end of your time on the UAP task force? Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will, non-human, exotic origin, vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. No. I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived. It was a ruse. People started confiding in me. They approached me. I have plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program. They named the program. I've never heard of it. And they they told me, based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other, other proof, that there was, in fact, a program that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. How about that? Non-human craft materials. It's just... And they have a lot of them. It I know. Like. I, I want to know what that number is. What would be your guess? It's got to be dozens. Yeah. Dozens, if not more. I mean, well, if you just look at the be... sheer number of, mm -hmm. of UFO incidents over the years, we've covered a number of them on this show. Yep. You know, the ones that have actually been released to the public, but there's mm -hmm. obviously tons where military, because if you think about it, all of the militaries of the world, what do they do? They monitor their space on this planet. Of course. So the amount of interactions that our military and all the militaries of the world have had with these unidentified flying objects is probably, I mean, it would be in the thousands, I'm sure. I mean, it's, it'd yeah. probably blow our minds if we actually yeah. knew the sheer number of Him, him saying quite a incidents. number makes me think hundreds, if not So if you, more, you consider, yeah. like, let's just for the sake of this conversation say it's thousands. And then you think about out of all of those craft, something's piloting them. Mm -hmm. So how many different pilots have we actually recovered from these down craft or craft that we've shot down and recovered the pilots from? And, mm -hmm. and then you also have to consider the possibility, you know, he's using this, he ends up using this word for aliens, non-human intelligence. Mm -hmm. So the way that he talks about this, which we'll, we'll play the clip here in a second, makes you believe that it's not just one species per se, or one form of intelligence. We could be dealing with dozens of different species and intelligence. Which would mathematically make sense, right? But that's just, I mean, that's just wild to even think about. Like oh, there's yeah. all of these different non-human intelligence mm -hmm. all around us flying around these crafts. But of course there is, of course there is, right? Like he's sense. just confirming what so many people just, I feel have already accepted. He is. Let's hear his, his thoughts on, you know, this non-human intelligence. That the U.S. government has been concealing the existence on this planet of alien life. I would couch it as non-human intelligence, you know, NHI, like we would like to say in our, our language. Why do you say that? Why do you say NHI? I don't want to necessarily denote origin. I don't think we have all the data to say, oh, they're coming from a certain a certain location and i and i i couch it as somebody who studied physics where maybe they're coming from a different physical dimension as described in quantum mechanics we know there's extra dimensions How due to mean? high uh high energy particle collisions etc and there's a theoretical framework to explain that yeah let me cut to the quick though you're saying there is an intelligent species engaging with this planet yes that's potentially extraterrestrial yeah boom if that is true, everything we know about everything, why we're here, who we are, mm -hmm. could be completely flipped upside down. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're interdimensional, as he suggests. 
Uh, I mean, it would that to me so is, many things. That to me is more interesting than the fact that there's extraterrestrials from elsewhere out in space visiting us. You think it could be a combination of both? I do think it's both. And I think mm-hmm. that that's how they also interface with us is because one of the biggest, I guess, what skeptics say when talking about aliens is, well, how are they traveling light years across the universe to come visit us? And I think when you look at it from that perspective and you start considering the science and the energy required in order to even make that possible, it's hard to wrap your head around. Sure, it's possible if they have some advanced technology we don't know about, but I think the the bigger thing here is it's interdimensional. And we know there's multiple dimensions to this reality. And so there is intelligence throughout this universe that's able to that either lives in these other dimensions and perhaps they're all around us. Yeah. Perhaps they're right here in the room sitting next to me. I know. That's what's been really listening to us. Hit me the last few days is really thinking about the fact that they could just be here at all times that we can't see them. Right. And I've always had that feeling with ghosts and it creeps me out thinking, you know, there's like moments where you're, you think you're in private on the bat, you know, on the toilet or something. And like, I always think about what if a ghost is like watching me, like my dead grandparents or something. Like, do you ever have those thoughts? Now I'm thinking like aliens. You know, I think it's a very real possibility. And I think there's, there's also a possibility that all of these ghost sightings and people seeing apparitions and having experiences oh, yeah. with orbs, mm-hmm. the way that we've only been able to explain it is like, oh, it is our dead relatives. It is our ancestors. It is spirits of humans that have lived on this earth. But in actuality, it is some other intelligent species yep. that is manipulating themselves in order to engage with us in different ways. Like if you've ever thought about that way, like maybe what you're actually seeing when you're seeing a ghost is not the ghost of a human that was on this earth, but in fact, another intelligent being. Well, it's like a mix of. That oh, isn't actually say, dead. Yeah. That isn't dead. Is a very much alive, but mm-hmm. is coming to you in this way because they know that that's what they know what we believe clearly. They know where we are spiritually. So they're coming to us in a way that makes sense to our brains mm-hmm. in a way that we can perceive them and make sense of it. But perhaps when we quote unquote die, we're going into a different dimension. And so these things that we think are aliens or we think are ghosts, it could, like you were saying, yeah. Kendall, maybe it is people like we were in our human form as we know it now. And then we pass on and we move to a different dimension and we right. become, even though, you know, it's t- still technically us, we're in a completely different form. Yeah. as something that, uh, you know, humans can't understand. Yes. I, don't know. I think that could be. That would be I think sense. that's a possibility. I do think that there's just all these dimensions are teeming with life that is not human in origin. That would, that your theory would suggest that it's a human origin. No, 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 no. Not that it's a human origin that perhaps, are you talking about like our souls move to this dimension? Yeah, it could be, or or in the sense of like, what's to say that the body that we're in now isn't some type of, al- you know, quote unquote, alien form to something else. Like, I'm not saying humans are any more special or unique versus the... Exactly, uh, yeah. a, Something that's in a different dimension. But like mm-hmm. the essence of yeah. who you are... Sure. Mm-hmm. ...is, moves on to another dimension right. where it can interact with these other beings that exist. Mm-hmm. It's very po- I, I think there is something to all of that. I mean, clearly, we're the form that we're in right now is very unique to this reality. But perhaps there's something deeper within us that that resonates with these other beings. Hence, why they're here. Hence, why they're attempting to interact with us in different ways. I think is a very real possibility. Let's let's go further though in this video because it only gets wilder. Yeah, intelligence officer on the UAP task force. But let's face it, allegations of aliens and their spacecraft are hard to accept, even coming from a respected insider. Even if you call them NHI and UAP, how could such NHI travel to Earth in the first place and go undetected by the general public? Grush says the craft may not be travelling through space as we understand it. It is a well-established fact, at least mathematically and based on empirical observation and analysis, that there most likely are physical 
additional spatial dimensions. You could imagine uh, in 4 and 5D space where what we experience as linear time ends up being a physical dimension for in higher dimensional space where if you were living there, you could translate across what we perceive as a linear flow. So there is a uh, possibility that, and it, this is a theory here, I'm not saying this is 100% the case, but uh, it could be that this is not necessarily extraterrestrial and it's actually coming from a higher dimensional physical space that might be co-located, um, you know, right here. What can you tell me about these craft, these technologies? Why do you know it's exotic? Uh, based on uh, the very specific properties that I was briefed on, you know, isotopic ratios that would have to be engineered for it to be... Um, at those levels, but also just extremely uh, uh, strange, heavy atomic metal, you know, high up in the periodic table um, arrangements that um, we don't understand, you know, what the emergent properties are, but there's just a very strange mix of um, elements. So you're absolutely sure that the materials that these craft are made of are clearly not of this earth? Yeah, they're sophisticatedly engineered, um, certainly not by humans. There you go. That confirms a lot of other things that have, have come out in the past, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And things that we've talked about, too. Yeah. It brings me back to uh, Element 115. Yeah, it is Element 115. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. The idea of Element 115. That there, yeah, there's, there's elements beyond that the isotopic ratios that just don't make any sense. And we have no idea mm -hmm. how, how this would ever be, it was clearly like you said engineered so it doesn't occur naturally here on this planet so it came from elsewhere or it was created by a much more advanced technology i i think he explained the the dimensional theory very well that there's these spatial dimensions that can be manipulated in a different way than the way that we perceive time here you know we perceive time in a linear fashion but in 4d 5d space they're able to move around that timeline in a much different way they interact with with our world in a much different way and so therefore they're right. able to travel they don't they're not traveling long distances in time mm -hmm. it's it they're it's co-located all stacked on these different dimensions i mean pff, yeah you know I mean, head exploding like a bunch of different theories and ideas of how they could be traveling i know we've talked about um, the idea of wormholes and well, yeah, I mean, like well, that. I go back to Interstellar all the time, but <laughs> that's like our Bible. But but Interstellar does such a good job at visually representing what that five D it's so true space would look like mm -hmm. and how it could manipulate time and actions in this reality, mm -hmm. and it and and it also lends to the possibility of using wormholes to traverse large expanses of space and things like that so it's possible they're traveling they're able to travel through wormholes and black holes and things like that in order to reach different parts of the universe very quickly but wow i mean that is just mind-blowing stuff fall is right around the corner friends and most of our lives get busier in the fall and so hellofresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered right to your door. Simply choose recipes and pick your delivery date and lay back and enjoy the last days of summer knowing that dinner is covered. Parents out there, I know you have enough back to school shopping and planning to do. So let HelloFresh get those groceries and save you some cash for the pre-portioned meals delivered right to your door. You guys know Josh and I absolutely love HelloFresh in our house. We are paying subscribers. We get it every week and they have so many options now. They've really upped their game. They have, I think, 40 options every week to choose from and it's so hard to narrow down what we want we fight over it sometimes we do but th what i like is that they also bring back some of the the favorite yeah so we get to eat some of our mm -hmm. favorite recipes over and over mm -hmm. again i love that about hellofresh i do too gotta have that ramen one of my favorite things to do with hellofresh is is bought like i follow the recipe cards which are super easy it's like six steps and mm -hmm. you only need like a few items from your pantry to to make it yeah. all work like oil and butter and stuff like that but i love to kind of like add my own seasonings to it yeah. and kind of like spice it up a little bit mm -hmm. and customize it for yeah yourself. customize it for myself and it always comes out so delicious mm. Love it. And one of my personal favorite parts about HelloFresh is that you can majorly cut back on food waste. 
We know in this country, we are big food wasters. And there's so many times where I'll have a recipe I want to make and it calls for some ingredient and then it only uses a little bit of it, but I have to buy a lot of it. And then I can't figure out how to use it. And I have to throw it out because it'll go bad. But HelloFresh sends me exactly the amount that I need for the recipe. No more, no less. And I just love that. Plus, before we were HelloFresh subscribers, we did a lot of delivery and takeout. We did. And as you all know, it's very expensive to do that mm -hmm. for you know, long periods of time. What's great about HelloFresh is it's 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than even grocery shopping. So it just simplifies everything. Mm -hmm. Plus, you save money and you eat delicious meals. Honestly, it's it's an amazing deal all the way around. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 mile higher and use code 50 mile higher for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 mile higher and use code 50 mile higher for 50% off plus free shipping. So David has said he's never personally seen any of this non-human intelligence, but he's spoken to people who have, and he's been shocked by the revelations. He was a skeptic, believe it or not, and a non-believer yeah. before, but he did a lot of research and interviewed multiple people, many of whom didn't know each other. He tried to get direct access to this program that was doing all this, but he was denied, and then he faced retaliation, and he reported this reprisal to the intelligence community inspector general as a whistleblower complaint. One thing that he had talked about in his News Nation interview that I thought was very interesting and should really frustrate all of us is that we could be gaining so much by having access to this information and knowing more about these materials. I mean, they are being used by the military. Um, they're learning a lot and applying some of it. But he said that the scientific community in the private sector could do even more with it if they had access to these crafts, to the information. And we could be, you know, making huge strides we would probably in be, humanity um, when it comes to energy and travel and defense. I mean, there's just endless things that we could be learning. And we're truly being deprived of that as citizens. Right. For the use of the military and what are mm -hmm. they using it for is the bigger question right but of course like they don't want us to have it why would they because if we have it well mm -hmm. it makes us more powerful it us more and powerful. it doesn't want they don't want us to be more powerful right. or rival them in any way i mean that's that's how it's been since basically the beginning of human mm -hmm. civilization and right? there'd be so many things that we could rework that would make the government essentially less money in the end you well, know. we wouldn't need it, probably. Right. We probably wouldn't even need it. We'd government be less dependent. Anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. It would free us. Well, well, and it's also about power and control, too, right? Like the, yeah. the governments are all in competition with each other and want, you know, all of them want to reign supreme at some point, I believe. And so they're being very protective over the information and what they've learned from these different programs they've got going on. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, um, I think we talked about in a past episode was it asteroid mining and how if we like yes hypothetically like mined all the elements all the um metals and stuff precious metals from an asteroid it would just like break the entire like global economy like there would yes be no you know functioning use for money or anything like that mm -hmm. so i think when we think about the spacecraft and why they're keeping it from us if there is these like uh unknown previously unknown elements or high concentrations of like precious metals and stuff like that, you know, it would be in their interest to, you know, keep those away from the public, keep knowledge of that away from the public, because that would really upset, you know, money makes the world go round. And That's it's like, right. if they can't, you know, keep us in control with that, then. Right. Well, they wouldn't they be able to continue yeah. to manipulate the economy in the way that it's manipulated. I mean, it all goes back to control at the end of the day. It's all about how can they control the masses and continue a certain narrative that only benefits them rather than mm -hmm. the rest of humanity and that's us right i think it's so interesting that there are so many people out there that have this belief of why why would they lie to us when there are so so many reasons i mean it's very obvious why they wouldn't want us to know about any of this i think it also doesn't help though and this may be more so um for like the older generations, like our parents and stuff. But for a long time, unless you went digging for the truth, like there was, you know, where would you find it? If you turned on the news and watched the news, like they're not going to give it to you. Right. And so you can't really blame people, I feel, because especially 
before the internet really became as powerful as it is now, it was hard to find. And unless you went digging for it, you you wouldn't find it. So, you know, I think it's easier to just be like, well, yeah, I trust what they're telling me and I trust mm-hmm. what the news is telling me because I don't, I've never heard anything else. Yeah. I mean, the internet was the worst thing to happen to yeah. those in control. Also for the best. Sure. <laughs> best, for I, I, <laughs> best for us. I will say, I think that applies to probably the majority of people from, from the, the older generations, but I do think there is a large number of people from those generations who were were aware that something was going on i think because there was talk radio shows i mean art bell's a huge one he was talking about this for a long long time i mean but it was much easier to discredit those people Mm -hmm. yeah because there was you know there was no way to confirm their facts or information or who they were interviewing and talking to because people have been coming forward i mean there's been whistleblowers since right the very beginning and so those that were you know were questioning things Look, they were looked at. They as could like, go find and and see the information, but there was that fear of of backlash from those around them because they had no way to verify it. It just mm-hmm. seemed like you were just believing in you know a fairy tale that's just yeah. being told by somebody on the radio. Like versus- if this hearing happened twenty thirty years ago, it would be I think such a different response from the general public versus. This oh, people went, would be freaking shit back then. Oh, yeah. Now people have been fairly like whatever about it. I've seen so many like, jokes on the Internet about how like, you know, they told us all of this. We just found all this information out and people are like, whatever. It's nothing that people aren't already thinking about and aren't aware of because the majority of people who are active on the Internet have come across these theories and information at some point or another. It's not completely out of left field shocking to them to the point where it's going to shake up civilization at least not yet not yet but from this hearing i think if before the internet that hearing happened it would have oh, yeah. been it would have been bombshell it'd be yes you know people would be in the streets probably mm-hmm. demanding to know what's going on and i and i think that's where you really have to start thinking about has there been a psyop in place for a very long time to desensitize us to these things so mm-hmm. that this isn't a big deal right and so We're not all like going out into the streets, marching down to, you know, the White House and, you know, Washington, D.C., demanding that they they show us the proof, which is what we should be doing. We should be demanding that they they release all the evidence and all of the things that they know about this issue that affects all of us. Our universe. It affects everybody on this entire planet. Yeah. In in the most intimate way profound way yeah and that's that's what's crazy is that people i I think the biggest thing is like a lot of us are like well what are we going to do about it the military is going to start shooting at us or you know we're going to get shut down if we try to do something like that Mm -hmm. there's not we feel helpless and that's that's the worst thing about all of this and just the state of of humanity right now is we are all in a helpless state where we feel like we have no power to go against the government and go against the the forces that exist in this world without potentially losing our lives or ending up in prison. And I do think there is an element of fear for the average person that it's easier to just think, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I've got so many other, in their minds, bigger problems to worry about that the idea of more and more coming out like obviously we want to know the truth but isn't there a part of you that's kind of like don't even tell me i know it sounds so stupid but i just i get so i guess years ago when we would talk about this it didn't i just wanted to know everything but now it freaks me out more than ever especially now that we have a child because i think about the real implications of how it would change my life and obviously my will to know the truth trumps that but I think for a lot of people, they don't, they're not going to go get up and demand this information because, first of all, they don't have the time or the energy to spend on that. But also, there's this element of fear and like not wanting to know the reality. Well, that's because that's the way we've been programmed. Exactly. We've been programmed to think this way for this very reason. So things like this that happen don't phase us, and right. including a number of other world events that have occurred. So that true. When in one year and out the other, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And, like how and, many massive events can we right, process? Right before we we all start waking up and we're like, oh, whoa, there's way more going on here than I even understand or know, mm-hmm. and I need to know the truth. And so, 
I, I think it's really difficult because we, I always go back to this, this fact that we're all in our own little worlds, right? We exist within our own little bubble in our day to day mm -hmm. life. We all have our routines. I mean, we're, we're such simple creatures. If you think about it, we really are like as advanced and smart as, as we are, and that's we're all so simple and, you know, and we've become docile and mm -hmm. we're very like, mm -hmm. you know, conditioned to the way you know, we, we run our daily lives and all the, the comforts and, and different things. And so unless something directly affects our daily routine, yes. we're not going to care. And I exactly. think that's the number one thing is like until this issue like affects our daily routine, mm -hmm. many of us are not going to care about this issue because mm -hmm. we've got other things where we have. I mean, we're all filled with anxiety. We all have these things that we worry about on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. Like, how am I going to, you know, make money to feed myself and pay my bills and you know how am i going to advance my career how am i going to you know continue growing this relationship like we have so many different other things that we're worried about on a day-to-day -day basis until it, one of these larger issues especially when it comes to aliens or some other intelligence existing on this planet and we all see it with our own eyes right we're not going to care well many i think that's another care. reason why it's kept for, from us i mean just add that to the the list here is it would fuck up everything because people wouldn't give a shit about a lot of what we do at this point. Like think how many times during the day, I don't know if this happens to you. It happens to me all the time where I'm doing something or I'm stressing about something, thinking about something. And then I remember that there's fucking aliens. <laughs> I'm like, why do I care about any of this shit? Why am I doing this? It's a great uh, mental reset. Should put that it in is, your head. It is, but it's also often. a mental fuckery. Because it sends me down this path of like, just why? Why am I? What? What's the point? <laughs> yes. Oh, you know? I get that. Well, we all want to know what the point and is. And like, if we really get to the point where we're seeing this, like, you know, we are have the proof right in front of us. Are people going to go to work? Are they going to keep the system going? No, our whole planet is going to change. Every, everything. Everything. Everything we know about life will 100% change. Right. And for us... That we can't even fathom what that would be like because mm -hmm. we've been conditioned in the way life has been for the last hundred plus years. Yeah. And so it's easier for us to assume life will continue in the same way that it has been for the past hundred years. We saw our parents grow up. We saw our parents, you know, live their lives. We think, oh, it's just all going to be the same through my lifetime and then through my yeah. child's lifetime and mm -hmm. their child. That's, I don't believe that's the case. I think we are going to see the entire world flip on its head are we living through the biggest shift of all yes. time right now yes i believe it that, seems truly. that way or we're right uh, right ahead of it i believe it i really do i think we're we're starting to see i think the seams of those in power and those who control yeah. everything are starting to unravel because i do believe the internet has been a major contributor to that for sure the and biggest it has not only allowed us to seek out information we wouldn't have been able to find otherwise, but it's connected us as a species. Yeah. It has literally connected us as a species in a way, in often toxic ways, but also in many, many good ways where we are able to band together. We are able to share information among each other mm -hmm. and truly unite. And I think they are trying to throw every curveball at us, you know, mm -hmm. with all these things that are going on and politics and the left and the right and all of this bullshit yeah to try to distract us from the larger issue here and that is just us look at us as a species on a planet flying through space mm -hmm. that has life teeming all around it life potentially existing with us here cohabiting this planet with us just in a different dimension yeah. that we occasionally <laughs> interact with through these experiences and i mm -hmm. do truly believe those that seek out experiences with this other non-human intelligence are having those experiences if you look at all of the people who experience paranormal uh unexplained phenomena mm -hmm. i believe that's all part of this that the the yeah. all of this unexplained phenomena Me that people too. experience is is having interactions with mm -hmm. whatever else is here sharing this planet with us potentially in these other dimensions that exist all around us and we are just not evolved enough or our consciousness is not high enough in order to perceive those dimensions yet. Well, you, do you think humanity could honestly take it? Do you think a lot of people won't? No, 
I, mean, I don't think a lot of people are prepared for I don't for think that. we're mentally prepared. And I don't think a lot of that's our fault either. I think it's because we're so conditioned and under so much stress and fearful and we're fed so much bullshit. Because of the programming. Yeah. So what we all need to do is, you know, switch our programming, delete the programming, but how do start people thinking a different do that way. And survive at the same time. You know, a lot that's of this is part. like, I don't think we are spiritually evolved enough to accept these things but how are people supposed to take time out of their day to like focus on spirituality when you know a lot of people are just barely getting by but that's the whole point that's what they want like, exactly been, the whole system has been set up so that we can barely survive right and if we god forbid try to take a step back and do something else other than just trying to live our day-to-day -day life get to mm -hmm. the next day get through the end of the focus week focus on the carrot then yeah. like right that then it screws us and we're you know, then we have bigger problems that we created for ourselves. And so mm -hmm. that's what they want is to us to sit here and be like, well, I don't have time to like question things or try to grow spiritually or whatever yeah. it may be, because I'm literally just trying to survive right now every week. And if all of this is true, which in my opinion it is, I mean, bits and pieces, whatever, but it's going to just crush so many people yeah. on a spiritual level too. Cause there are, totally. I mean, it just conflicts with every religion. It's going to rewrite every... I don't think a lot of people could mentally even accept it or even go there to think about it. I think they will when they see it. When they see when it? When they see... But that's the thing is like, I think we can all prepare ourselves for that day whenever that comes when we are confronted head on with whatever this is because it's going to shatter everybody. It's going to shatter Everyone everybody's... In such, in such different ways, yeah. How do we prepare... I don't fucking know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, how do you well, think we prepare? I mean, I think it all comes back to what we were talking about before, money and its relationship with control. And um, it's kind of like, how do you prepare? How do you like, you know, if we want to deprogram ourselves yeah. or whatever, when you literally don't have the time, you don't have the money. Like, right. and I can't just step away because I want to. It's like, I have mouths to feed. I have kids. Yeah. I have a house. Uh, you know, I have to pay rent. And mm -hmm. I do understand why people are like, that's great. I believe in aliens, but like, I don't really know what else I'm supposed to do about this. Exactly. Like people, I'm people my age, we can't afford houses anymore because mm -hmm. of the real estate market and everyone has student loan debt. And it's like, you know, the government's like, we have aliens and it's like, amazing. Like, what do you Can want you us to do with that? Like do something to alleviate, you know, the stresses that the entire population has right now with, in terms of like money, mm -hmm. um, and and then maybe I'll I'll have a spare second to to yeah. to give a shit to do something. And we almost have an advantage. We do have an advantage as Americans and other more developed countries out there. But there are so many countries out there who don't have access even to the internet, or to, they have no idea what's going on, and they're just really focused on survival, like at a very true level. So how do they prepare for this? How do they even become informed on it? I mean. The overall population is so unprepared that mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how we would ever get there. Like, are we too controlled and too far gone at this point that we would ever be prepared? I guess the question I just keep coming back to is like, what would preparation look like? Because right. it's like, you know, I prepare for like a meeting by bringing relevant notes and scheduling mm -hmm. out time. But it's like. I don't know what these non-human intelligent life forms like want what what are they trying yeah. to do like are they coming here to help us to harm us i think yeah for a lot of people too we talk about all the stresses of the world everything that's going on right now it almost seems like an attractive idea that there is a sort of like a, a group of beings that are going to come down and save us all from ourselves yes, of course because Very it seems like we're, yeah we're on this I mean, we can't even take care of the planet. We know that no. the planet's, you know, going to go kaput because of climate change. And yeah, and here we are. We're not. It doesn't really show signs of slowing down. So, And how many incidents have we covered on this show where the messages that people are getting from aliens or crop circles are showing that we have got to take care of our planet, that we are borderline completely fucking ourselves and you know, it's very interesting to go back to that. And of course, in your mind, it's a better thought to think, hmm, they're going to come save us. They're like angels or something. And I, I tend to like be, be very naive about it. And they might be. That's they the very be. the Stephen Greer approach that 
they have our best interests in mind. And but why would they care? But they already so much have. About They've us? already shut down nuclear no, launches. Yes, there have been instances. But I also too. don't. I think it. Why can't it be both? Like you said, I know there's not one alien species. Yeah, there's probably millions of them, billions right. of them. So chances it, are, it, chances are that some are would harm us and some would try and help us mm-hmm. and maybe no. there's there's certain that's exactly what it is yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's well that's what we think <laughs> well I'm but just like, says logic, exactly what it, it is it makes most sense to and again you know logically we're talking about aliens here but it's most to me it makes too. most no it makes most logical sense though there's there, i agree and i also do believe in like the universe the, Versal idea of like good and bad and you can't have good without bad i mean we've mm-hmm. talked about this in our philosophy episodes what is good without bad what is bad without good you can't have one of the one without the other right so to me it just i can't see ever a, a time when it would be every alien or non-human intelligence whatever that is here is bad or every one of them is good like i agree i it's, don't think that's possible it seems most logical that it's a mix but how how invested are in our survival are they actually like are they encouraging it and hoping for the best or is it like a huge issue on their place where they actually care you know i mean or they see us as so insignificant that well the way that i look at it is i do think there is non-human intelligence that has a vested interest in the earth because i believe that the earth is a conscious being the earth itself is living Mm -hmm. you know they don't call it mother earth for no reason but how many other earths out there are there you right. know how many other conscious but planets sure, are there all of them the entire so then cosmos why are we that important because like if you lose a few because there's whatever. other because there's other intelligence sharing this planet with us it's not just us we think it's just us we're the most intelligent beings on this planet but they're probably they probably have the c- capability to fucking leave but maybe they don't want to. Maybe they can't leave. Maybe there's something. Maybe their life force is the Earth, and the Earth has to survive in order for them to survive. And or therefore, maybe, maybe we're an experiment that oh, they are quite invested in. Or at this it's, point. there's a bigger picture that we don't understand of like, you know, if the Earth goes down, it's a domino effect, and there's a, somehow it's going to affect things that are not on this planet. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, if you look at it, if you look at the galaxy as like a human body or something like that, if, or you think of it as a country, right? If our, one of the yeah, if one of the countries is going down, or if it's a if it's a body, and then one of the vital organs is going down, like the rest are going to have, mm-hmm. you know, it's an it's ecosystem, gonna, right? So, and again, I have no Just idea thoughts. proving that, but it does make me wonder if maybe that's because I've thought that too. Like, why the fuck do they care if we survive or not? Mm -hmm. You know, why aren't they just like, okay, bye. You guys are a bunch of idiots. You can go kill yourselves off and we'll move on to the next. But perhaps there's something that if we were to just, you know, if the earth were just to end and blow up or just become a rock, a dead rock, that, that there would be very negative consequences to that. Yeah. My my argument to that is, if you look at the Earth and you compare it to other planets that we know about, we know about a lot of different plants. Obviously, a very small amount compared to mm-hmm. all the plants in the universe. But I think you, we're all missing the fact that this planet is perfect in the way that it's able, in the sheer beauty of it, first of all. But the ability it has to support life on mm-hmm. it in the way that it does it yeah. may be a rare thing. Maybe more rare than we even know. Maybe. Like, yeah, sure, sure there's billions of planets but like maybe there's a lesser number of planets that are like ours that contain all like if you think about it it almost seems too perfect sometimes the fact that our sun is just the right amount away Mm -hmm. that we're Mm -hmm. able to breathe the air outside freely and and we've had these cycles that have existed over the the course that this planet has been around and it's supported all types of amazing life the dinosaurs through the ice age all the creatures that came that live through that to humans that, you know, however we got here or whatever we evolved from, I think there is something unique about this planet. I think there's something special about it. And I don't, I don't think, I, I think there's a vested interest in making sure that this planet is around for, and I, that's because they have been here far longer than any of us have. They have, perhaps they have existed on this planet far longer than our human origins go. I mean, we don't even know how, where our human origins start. So it's like, I, I think there's a vested interest in this planet by whatever this non-human intelligence is, and perhaps it's because they need it in order to survive themselves, or there's something more special about it. And 
they're trying to protect it and resources and as a result that's why they've been interacting with us in different ways and observing us in different ways and that's what's actually going on is that this is a special place i truly believe the earth is a special place it does make me think of i'm not sure if we have the clip today but an interview that tom DeLong did wasn't that on um steve o's yeah we have that at the end of this do we yeah could we quickly maybe jump to it i'm not sure if we have the exact part but it's kind um, of a we have the whole long clip i think so it's towards the end of that clip yeah yeah. okay well you want to watch we can go back to it later but i want to bring in this thought now of the idea that we there is something about humans that is special too that they don't have potentially oh the consciousness Mm -hmm, that the the emotional aspect that is something that love right do other and non-intelligence have love experience do they have feelings the same way that we do right is there something special about us that they are interested in preserving to learn more from us to gain something from us maybe we are more rare than we think i think that's a really distinct possibility too when you think about you know, whales have like the part of their brain that processes emotions like love is bigger than ours. So they yeah, like theoretically have the ability to feel love like deeper than we can. And that's just such a mind blowing thing to think about. And that's here on Earth. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like we evolved from whales. So you think about if there's, yeah. you know, beings that we are somehow connected to evolutionarily in like a multidimensional way that maybe they they can't understand those emotions or maybe that is the reason that we're all we're all still kicking because yeah they can feel things like empathy and love and compassion on a level that we can't understand and they have this kind of ability they're more intelligent than us so they have the ability to kind of protect us from you know if there are multiple beings i'd hope they're all nice but you can't really right or maybe like i mean tom was kind of saying that maybe they they don't have that at all mm-hmm. and that's something that's that they're true. Yeah, you know really possibly. interested in us for wanting to understand that wanting that for themselves because love makes you do crazy things it's it it's really does. just you know i can see why a being that would think more rationally quote unquote like analytically would be like what do you need love for like yeah. what is the purpose yeah. of this why i want to understand it more i want to see how it can be harnessed and used mm-hmm. um do we have I don't know if we have that exact part of the interview. We I would love to play that it's part the first one. since we're talking about it. Yeah, there's. A, I was just reading a book and I saw ago where there's a ufologist that got invited to this seance thing where they were channeling and interacting with this like fucking demon or something. And they're all sitting in a circle and then they put the one guy in the middle and he starts channeling and gets possessed by this entity. And the first entity is like, hey, we're... we're we are we are these entities that are adjacent to you in another timeline and all this stuff and we can't feel emotion but we need you to host to help us feel emotion but then shit starts going horribly wrong paranormal stuff the temperature drops all this weird shit and everyone in that room except for two people died within six months and weird occurrences and this guy was one of the guys that didn't and what i find is really strange about that is that when you you know having a host consciousness in your body um, and then looking at some of the visitations and what some of the evidence looks like, it looks like there's, there's beings that don't have, it's like, maybe they don't have souls. Maybe they're AI. Maybe they're a different life form, like an insect that grew. It's like, well, I'm not scared of a goldfish. So I leave earth. I come back 10 billion years later. That goldfish is a T-Rex and you're like, yeah. Whoa. And then you leave earth and then go, that T-Rex is now like a lot shorter. And it's like a, fucking lizard dude that's telepathic and building spaceships and you're like it took like 20 billion years but it happened because no one fucking fucked with this planet you know right so you can see how life just grows in a certain direction so then you kind of wonder well if something grew for millions billions of years that never had a consciousness to begin with like a fly or something and then now it can kind of pop over laterally and to our fucking timeline it's going to come on you like flies on dog shit. Oh, what is this? Huh? What is this? And they're just like looking at you. Right. How scary would that be if in your bed and you got these big bug eyed insects that are like, what are you? What is going on? And they start cutting you open and they're like, and then all of a sudden you get scared and they're like, that's an interesting energy. They're all feel that we can feel something. You know, I can see that being the case where emotion and feeling and love is like so gnarly. It's like, they want to understand it. They want to have it. But what if they figure out like, hypothetically, what if they figure out that, um, that we're immortal 
that our soul is part of something greater and bigger. Right. And we might die and have a painful life, but we learned a lot of lessons and we might reincarnate, you know, to learn more, or whatever. And they're sitting here going, if we die, we have nothing. They're all, we want that. And then what if we have those interactions and we start writing books in the Bible that says Satan wants your soul, demons want your soul, you know? It starts to all make a little bit more sense, right? Fucking that, mind blowing. Sh- that is like spot on. Man. I don't know. I love him. Which we've talked about Tom DeLong many a times. And I mean, he's been saying this stuff for years. And mm-hmm. I mean, based on what David Grush says, it turns out he's right. Yeah, he feels validated. But that's a, that's a really interesting theory to think about. That maybe they're after, maybe the soul is what makes us unique. Yeah. And perhaps there is other non-human intelligence that doesn't have souls. And therefore, they, they're trying to figure out how to get what we have mm-hmm. or study it or... Yeah, you know, maybe they do have souls, and we're all connected anyway. And I so like there's a that connection there. Theory a lot better than that we're useless pieces of shit monkeys <laughs> living on a planet, because that stresses me out. Where, when it's over, it's over. Yeah, that there's no. It all goes black. Mm-hmm. And that's it. The mm-hmm. end. Well, just the idea that we would be worth investing in. Oh, gives, that we're not just like right. playing around on this planet, and there's mm-hmm. no purpose at all. Mm-hmm. Like I hear a lot of people comparing us to like insects that maybe the reason we don't communicate with aliens or they don't, you know, really they're not invested in us is because we're not worth investing in because we're just these like underdeveloped animals. Yeah, I don't know. I don't don't like that one. I like the other one. I think the sheer fact that we have the ability to sit here and contemplate our our soul in the universe in itself is a, a truly remarkable thing. And well, on our scale, but maybe it's not that special. Well, I just throwing it out there. We're contemplating literally what's more than that. Like what's worth more than that information. And we're able to, there's a lot of creatures on this planet that can't contemplate that we can. I know, but there could be creatures out there that, already know that information well yeah i'm not saying that they don't know that i'm just saying what's already here what we know that's already here i know well we think we're evolved because we're as evolved as we can be but i don't know i guess either way you slice it either way you slice it (laughs) even if you're not going on vacation summer's all about a vacation state of mind whether i want to listen to zach bryan on repeat or just need to retreat inside my own head for a bit I love creating my own summer soundtrack by popping in my Raycon wireless earbuds. There's so much going on all summer. Sometimes you need some upbeat music to pump you up before you see people or to stay calm with some guided meditation. You know, family gatherings, sometimes you need to get your head straight and do some meditating before you see everybody. I love my Raycons because they fit perfectly in my ears and I use them to fall asleep at night to my favorite sleep playlists. Sometimes I even pop on Planet Sleep from here and there to remember the good old days. But let me tell you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. Use earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation and awareness mode. Raycons have extremely long battery life at 32 hours, including eight hours of playtime. So you can listen to what you want, when you want for a really long time, which is great for those long road trips. They come with custom gel tips for the most comfortable in-ear fit which is my number one thing that I love about Raycons is just how comfortable they are and how they fit my ears and I can lay on my side and my ears don't feel like they want to burst. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. The bass is bumping. And Raycons come with a 30 day happiness guarantee. So you've got 30 days to make sure you're happy with them. So you really can't lose. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, Mile Higher listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash milehigher. That's buyraycon.com slash milehigher to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash milehigher. So let's go back to David for a moment because he does reveal some other very interesting things. We kind of mentioned Roswell. And if you look at UFO lore as a whole, at least in the United States, It seems like it really starts with Roswell, 1947. But David says the UFO cover-up has been going on for 90 years, starting with the first recovery in Europe. 
in Magenta, Italy in 1933. They recovered part of a crashed vehicle, but the Italian government under Benito Mussolini moved the crashed vehicle to a secure Italian air base where it was stored until his regime ended. From there, now this is what's interesting, Pope Pius XII back-channeled that, quote-unquote is what he said. The Vatican told America what the Italians had, and the Americans took the craft, which we saw that with Virginia, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Americans always go out and get the craft and bring it back. Always. So we have craft from that have crashed all over the planet. Well, not just crafts, but I and know, intelli- the non-human intelligence. Yeah. The bodies of the pilots. Where did right. we see that? We just talked about Virginia. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that story seem a lot more believable now? Oh, yeah. That's wild. Everything feels more believable now. So the interviewer, um, Ross, asked David about Roswell, but David said those details were not approved for him to talk about. Yep. And a Which lot is of, code for it's fucking real. Right. <laughs> a lot of skeptics bring up this point. It doesn't seem plausible that a supposedly highly intelligent species that is advanced enough to visit Earth would build and get here in highly sophisticated crafts that would somehow just keep crashing. But David has a response to that. And I think a lot of people ask that. He says that as advanced as we humans are, we still build things that crash, right? Cars, planes, etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because these beings are highly intelligent doesn't mean they're perfect or there won't be a small percentage of crafts that crash. Which mm-hmm. I think there's also the possibility that there's just straight on shot down, straight up shot down. Oh, for sure. For sure. And the but military yeah, says they, are, they crashed, but we mm-hmm. shot them down. There probably are a lot of natural crashes as well. Mm-hmm. It's possible that, you know, they're just not familiar with our elements and like it's not designed perfectly for Earth. And as to why there is so much secrecy around this, David points to feudalistic dominance, which we've been talking about, the race for asymmetric technology and the need to fuel the mighty war machine. Of course. In 1967, there were reports that UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, for those that don't know, were tampering with nuclear missiles at the Malmstrom Air Base in Montana. And David thinks these UAP were trying to figure out how far humans have advanced in terms of our nuclear capabilities. This could have been for innocent reasons or maybe possible hostile ones. David says a lot of people examining these crafts have actually suffered injuries examining these crafts. Mm-hmm. Which like they're very, really putting themselves at risk. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no oh, shit about would it. Would you want to go into a room with Fuck some no. alien material that you have no that could no literally way. kill you? Absolutely for all you know, not. Like people are brave. And the interesting thing is, like, one of the characteristics that continues to be found at 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 UFO crash sites or landings is high radiation levels. Mm-hmm. So, is there some form of like nuclear radiation that is required for these craft to operate because it would make sense yeah that their craft have there's you know there's some type of propulsion there's anti-gravity but there's also some type of nuclear energy being used as well we've been able to measure it from where at these sites where these ufo crash we're able to go out there and measure oh the radiation levels are high so a mat you know whatever these metals are have a high high radioactivity to them and so it would make sense that they're interested in what we're doing with nuclear energy. That, that to me is very interesting. So if you guys remember in December of 2017, the Tic Tac, which was the shape of this UAP or UFO, video was released or leaked, I guess. We first saw it on To The Stars YouTube channel, which is Tom DeLong's company. He posted up there, but it was a declassified video. And this video was actually from 2004 when pilots off of the USS Nimitz Capture this video through their FLIR cameras on their aircraft. And so David was asked about this and he said, the Pentagon show of transparency by releasing these videos is just a show. He says they have many more videos they could release that they choose not to. Cause of course that video was cool, no doubt, but it was not super impressive. We're like, it's black and white. Yeah. It's just like a little dot basically moving yeah. across the screen. It wasn't like anything. I mean, I thought it was cool, but a lot of people are like, it's no different yeah. than all the other UFO videos that so are out behind. there. So right? behind, yeah. Credible witnesses could also testify to Congress about other UAP sightings. David said some of these UAPs are very large, even the size of a football field. That's wild. And that, that would be impressive. <laughs> yeah. That would, I think, blow all of our minds if we got to see a video of a UAP the size of a football field. How insane. Whoa. That's just really hard to wrap your mind around. 
And he says these phenomena are not explainable by swamp gas, ball lightning, or St. Elmo's fire. He says this secret crash retrieval program includes at least one private aerospace company that is storing alien aircraft. Bet I can guess who that is. Mm -hmm. Do you know? We've talked about him before. Mr. Not Elon Musk. I know a lot of you probably thinking that. They would oh, never uh, give him. Bigelow. Robert Bigelow. Yes. And Bigelow, he knows some shit. Remember, oh, we, yeah, we played his shit. interview and his shit was mm -hmm. taken off. That You can't find that clip no, they anywhere. Shut him down. 60 Minutes interviewed him and he literally said what David said years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nobody <laughs> took him seriously. No. And I guarantee you, he's the private aerospace company that is Probably. keeping these some of these craft. Yeah, that would make sense. Mm hmm. Ross asked David about the fact that high-level officials have denied these claims about aliens, but David says that not everyone has been read into the program, of course. David says that he brought his concerns last year to the director of AARO, Sean Kirkpatrick, but Sean never followed up with him, which is the, the new program. A new, like, UFO. Mm -hmm. Arrow. Arrow, yes, that is the way it's pronounced. It's not double A-R-O. <laughs> <laughs> David can't say that just because they're advanced, they're kind, and we can't fully understand their motives, but he has said that there's been what he appears to be negative, malevolent activity. Lovely. And this is where a lot of people start splitting on their, their opinions and views on extraterrestrials is, you know, mm -hmm. is there the potential that there's some that are not very nice, you know, mm -hmm. maybe have malevolent intentions. There has to be. Like I we agree. talked about, there really has to be. I think everyone's right in a way. He also says that the U.S. has acted defensively against these UAP using certain techniques. And Ross has asked if a human has ever been injured or killed by UAP or non-human intelligence. And David said he couldn't get into specifics. But he said he was briefed about malevolent activity involving humans and whatever these beings are. Well, I think back to, yeah, Virginia. And then he pushed even further, was like, well, does that mean humans have been murdered by aliens or this intelligence and David responded that seems to be the case at one point yeah the US is not the <laughs> only country that's encountered this non-human intelligence and other countries have crash retrieval programs as well of course that would just be uh, the assumption right Russia definitely does and China of course the superpowers and and other countries as well but the major ones definitely have those retrieval programs he was also asked if the U.S. has agreements with these non-human intelligence. David said that's the kind of question he hopes national leadership will get to the bottom of. That's very interesting because what if we all find out that there are people within our government that they have some sort of agreement? They are actively like, I, I feel like that would make me very angry to know that they are dealing with this non-human intelligence without involving the public. Like, of course they what kind are of, what kind of society do we live in they they want us to believe we're free but we're not free we're living yeah. under it we can't even be a part of the conversation no. with our neighbors like why would we on. be well also devil's that to play devil's advocate here because mm -hmm. you know right. my ears perk up a little bit when you hear you know oh you know we've seen these nhi they've had malevolent interactions and uh you know negative and we don't know we've had to, you know, defend against them before. Yeah. And not only do we have a crash retrieval program, but so does China and Russia. And it's like, it seems like to some people, um, we're being primed to kind of accept this as a pretense for maybe expanding the military budget. Mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. and Russia are, you know, not allies, have these crash retrieval programs. And, you know, are do they have agreements with, these non-human intelligence, like we need to get on that. And, you know, it. I think some people, their their hinky meter kind of goes up when you hear, you know, uh, malevolent activity and, you know, yeah. military intervention and in mm -hmm. China and Russia and this kind of thing. Yeah. And it brings up like Project Blue Beam and the idea of a staged threat to us. It's just a furthering of control. Yeah, I think there, I don't think you can completely discount the possibility that it there is a national security issue here. Like maybe one of these beings or species is actively malevolent. I mean, I always go back to the idea that all these cases of demonic possession throughout human history are not demons in the biblical sense, but are in fact, you know, this idea that it's these malevolent beings that are, like Tom was just saying, gaining access to. A host consciousness yep. 
and yeah. taking it over makes more sense. Right? It, that's wild yeah. to think about. I mean, that 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 mm -hmm. to me seems like a likely scenario. It could definitely be something like that. So maybe there's something, you know, there's multiple species, and it could go back to even maybe there's a whole council between humans and multiple species and what you know they're interacting to try to keep these malevolent beings at bay or under controlled in order to not wreak havoc on on us here on earth because we we aren't able to defend ourselves from them mm -hmm. and therefore they're they're working with other nhi in order to try and protect us i mean that's always a possibility too it seems it's hard to believe that because of our distrust in the government but maybe that's a possible scenario too maybe they are really are trying to like look out for our best interest potentially when it comes to our safety and existence on this planet. I mean, imagine if there was this NHI that was able to just dive into any human body that they wanted to at any point in time and people just started going nuts and crazy and and maybe that's why some people go crazy. Yeah, I was they're being, say, maybe that's they're happening. maybe being inhabited by this malevolent being that yeah. is thirsty for consciousness and wants to try it out for for a little while and yeah destructing people's lives i mean that's a possibility pretty out there but it's a possibility no it's i don't think it's that far-fetched honestly david has also said that the u.s government has committed crimes to keep these secrets he's even seen evidence that white collar crime has been committed to do so he's also heard that people have been murdered over the years to keep the secret and that to me is no surprise i've also heard that because we've been back engineering this technology that this technology has been used in order to commit crimes such as drug trafficking, mm -hmm. human trafficking even. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very interesting to consider because mm -hmm. in many of those cases, in many cases we cover on this show, it just seems like some people just vanish and it's like, well, where do they go? There's, you know, there's no other reasonable human explanation for it. Is it possible there's some other multi-dimensional technology that the government or whatever these programs have that is taking mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and causing them to disappear or I using them how, for how many people have actually been murdered for trying to get this information out there i always go back to dr greer talking about how he was told if you say certain things or go to a certain level that there's a bullet with your name on it and then i always go back to, i know it's like really in conspiracy land but with jfk i just i don't know with everything we know about what he knew mm -hmm. what he was able to say Mm -hmm. I don't know. definitely a possibility just, all of this just makes so many things add up you know so many of the things we talk about well that, the dots are starting to be connected i right. feel like and we're starting to get some of the context for those dots to really understand it on a larger larger level so if we look at david brush as a whole his credentials have been vetted and confirmed yep he says he's not mentally ill he's never had a psychotic episode and he has nothing in his medical history that would cause him to say these things right he also says he was not a disgruntled employee. He simply believes that he's doing the public a service by disclosing these things, and he is not making anything up. He spent four years making sure he was not the subject of a disinformation campaign before he filed his whistleblower complaint, which is very important to remember. Because I think a lot of us want to jump to, this is a PSYOP, this guy is planted, and, and I still think there is a possibility for that. We can't completely yeah. rule that out because mm -hmm. we don't know. Because mm -hmm. maybe he is. Maybe he's just being fed all of this, maybe all these high ranking people that are coming to them are like Part of somebody disclosure. higher up was like, all right, he's yeah. going to be the guy that's going to go out and tell everybody this. We're going to feed him this information. And it's that possibility. very well might be the case. Yeah, we don't know. We'll have to just wait and see, I guess. So the interviewer, Ross, asks, why hasn't this leaked already? Things are leaked from the US government all the time via all these other different methods, WikiLeaks, Reality Winner, other people have come forward. I mean, Dr. Greer has interviewed a number of whistleblowers on his and insiders who have worked in these programs for years. There's full-blown video interviews of it. We've, we've talked about many of them over the years. And David responded that this has been leaking for decades, but sophisticated disinformation campaigns have done a good job covering the truth up. So that way, when people come forward with this info, people automatically believe they're tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists and loonies. And again, I think people lean into accepting that they are tinfoil hat loonies because it's easier than believing everything we know about everything is bullshit right and that so it's would easy be easy to a, convince people of something they want to believe right right 
and that's what makes this so so hard to understand and honestly just think about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the pentagon after david grush came out promptly denied all of david's claims here's what they said and just within the last 10 minutes or so, the Pentagon has released a statement to News Nation about this report. They say to date, Arrow has not discovered any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently. Arrow is committed to following the data and its investigation wherever it leads. Arrow working with the Office of the General Counsel and the Air Force Office of Special Investigations has established a safe and secure process for individuals to come forward with information to aid Arrow in its congressionally mandated historical review. Arrow's historical review of records and testimonies is ongoing and due to Congress by June 2024, and Arrow welcomes the opportunity to speak with any former or current employee uh, or contractor who believes they have information relevant uh, to this historical review. Yeah, it's like, and that's why their responses just lends more credibility yeah. to David, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Because not, not once did they ever say David Grush doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's mm -hmm. full of lot, you know, they just yeah. basically were like, well, we're basically doing our own investigation. We don't know anything about what he's talking about. And they mm -hmm. probably don't. That's the thing is this arrow task force, whatever does probably doesn't know the things that David knows because yeah, maybe not. They're, they're not read into it. Mm -hmm. And so they're not part they of the can't they can't exactly like group, deny yeah. everything that he says mm -hmm. because they just don't know themselves. And so it's kind of like, oh, well, well, actually, the government, we're at square one. We're just trying to figure this out for the first time. You know, we can't really deny or or claim any of David's statements are true or not. But, you know, we're doing our own investigation, which it'll be interesting to see what they come with, come up with by June of next year. Right. I'm probably yeah. more of the same bullshit, probably. So that brings us to the hearing, the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena. UAP it was called to order July 26th, 2023. And the hearing featured reps, including Matt Gates, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, Anna Polina Luna, Jared Moskowitz, and Tim Burchett. Congress established entities to research UAPs. National Defense Authorization Act of 2022 established All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, Arrow. This agency was supposed to coordinate their efforts with the Department of Defense and other federal agencies. Arrow's budget is classified, meaning they do not have congressional oversight. NASA is leading an independent study on UAPs. People have been demanding more disclosures about UAPs and these programs for over five decades. Is the government prepared to handle UAPs? The handling of the Chinese spy balloon may show us that they're not, and they are not being transparent. No shit. That's for damn sure. Mm -hmm. David Grush was essentially the star of this hearing, as we talked about. He testified about many of the same things that he discussed on the News Nation interview. And David has said that he has not personally seen a UAP, but he has interviewed people that have, that there is a secret crash retrieval program that has recovered alien spacecraft. He also says that this program has a reverse has reversed engineered some of these crafts. He was asked if people have been killed over this, and he was indirect, but implies that yes, it has happened. And he also says that people have been injured by the UAPs themselves. So a lot of the questions that he's asked in this hearing are are very similar, if not the same, yeah. as what he was asked in the News Nation interview. Yes. So let's we'll just kind of roll through some of his responses to some of these these questions that he was asked. This is the response he gave on injuries and deaths as a result of UFOs. Just so everybody knows, he's under oath when he's giving this testimony. It's mm -hmm. pretty important been a lot of things that have been said um, in in the public, uh, Mr. Grush. And, and so I want to get down to, if we can, some specifics, right? So um, at one point you had said that there, 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 there uh, has been harmful activity or aggressive activity. Has any of the activity um, been aggressive, been um, hostile to, in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured. And uh, the activity, and I got to buy by UAPs or by by people within the the federal government. Both, 
Okay. Yeah. So there has been activity by by alien or non non human technology and or beings that has caused harm to humans. Uh, I can't get into the specifics in a, an open environment, but at least the activity that I personally witnessed, and I have to be very careful here because uh, you don't, you know, they tell you never to acknowledge tradecraft, right? So what I personally witnessed myself and my wife was very disturbing. Wow. Yep. Even his wife has seen, mm -hmm. which he's suggesting that the government's committing crimes in these Shocking. programs. <laughs> For those that are working in these crimes? black programs, which goes back yep. to your whole comment on there's a bullet with your name on it. Mm -hmm. Come on, me. And know. David goes on to say he's faced retaliation for coming forward with his claims himself. Yeah, let's hear that clip. Thank you all very much. Um, have you faced any retaliation or reprisals for any of your testimony or anything on these lines? Yeah, uh, I have to be careful what I say in detail because there is an open uh, whistleblower reprisal investigation on my behalf, and I don't want to compromise that investigation by providing anything that may uh, help provide somebody information. But it was very brutal and uh, very unfortunate, some of the tactics they used to um, hurt me both professionally and, and personally, to be quite frank. yeah, It's very unfortunate. As they say, when you're over the target, that's when they do the most firing at you. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Maybe in a, um, if we could so, yes. get, a, get in a um, shit, man. confidential area skiff we could talk about that but unfortunately um we were denied access to the skiff and that's very unfortunate in this in this scenario in the last couple of years have you had incidences that have caused you to be in fear for your life for addressing these issues yes personally <sighs> of course which makes sense why his wife witnessed mm -hmm. stuff so they came after him of course they man, did. I hope and he's, he's probably still scared. I hope he's careful, man. I really worry for his safety. I hope he's taking precautions. I'll be really grateful for people like him that, yeah, that are willing to take that chance That's, for the greater good. Seriously. So then that leads us to probably the biggest bombshell, and that is the non-human intelligence that they have encountered. Here's what he said. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were course. they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? What do you think, Nancy? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Whoa. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos eyewitness like how would that be determined the specific documentation i would have to talk to you in a skiff about Spy which thing. uh skiff for those that don't know a secure compartmented information facility so it's it's literally a place they go to in order to talk about these like there's mm -hmm. certain things they can only talk about within a skiff and it's like this the most private of private soundproof rooms proof. that you go into the government classifies millions of documents yearly, but different clearance levels give you different access. Classification is sort of a tier system of secrecy. And I know we've talked about this a number of times on the show that all these people sitting here listening, their clearances are low, yeah. very low. They are not privy to a lot to very much at all, honestly. Mm -hmm. And we've brought up several times the idea that has been proposed by many people right. that the, you know, the president, the president doesn't even, know anything no. either. Mm -mm, they're pretty low on the totem pole as well. So in order to store, view, and discuss the most top secret information, officials with the proper security clearance need to go to a skiff. Again, these are ultra secure rooms that are fortified with many layers of precautions in order to prevent leaks from happening. There are thousands of these skiffs in the country and the rest of the globe. They're obviously concentrated in Washington, DC, but they can be found in federal buildings, embassies, military installations, and the offices of government contractors. Commonly, skiffs are built into shipping containers, but they can be as small as phone booths. 
and as big as an entire floor of a building. The walls are built to prevent any sort of eavesdropping, electronic or otherwise, and they're layered with gypsum and plywood boards. From there, they're encased with a material that prevents electronic eavesdropping. They're also built to stop someone from breaking in manually. Metal studs and mesh prevent outside intruders from forcing their way in. And to stop someone from listening in from the outside, they have an acoustic sealant and soundproofing materials installed. There's plenty more precautions though. Metal bars in the vents, multiple locks, motion sensors, guards, and more. But skiffs still function like a normal office does with workstations and places to hold meetings. Documents with this top level of classification are not supposed to leave a skiff. Over 1 million government employees have access to top secret information. Can you believe that? 1 million. I know that's that's a number that's hard to wrap your mind around. 1 million. And I think that goes back to like some people's uh, you know, questions as to why something this explosive hasn't yeah. been leaked yet. I mean, there was just some, it was a 20 year old kid that like, what was it? He leaked like all these like Ukrainian like battle plans and yes. stuff yes. the war to like some racist yep. Minecraft Discord group. Yep. Like yep. Yeah. that's yeah, who that was nuts. is able to just like, you know, mm -hmm. take all these confidential materials. So it's like, if, if he can leak something that sensitive, well, I think he was probably in a lower clearance, right? Like, I think the really juicy stuff's at the highest clearance levels. Yeah, right? like not he a million pretty, people have the top, top clearance, but he had pretty high like clearance levels, though. So I don't know, you know, depending on how high this. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't know, I guess, how high it goes or how many people we are don't in know each clearance level. Levels, yeah. yeah, we have no idea. I would assume, though, out of the million government employees with top secret clearances that as the tiers of the clearance levels go up the number of individuals goes down you would think yeah so that there's if something gets leaked from this level there's only five people it could be and they only have to look into five people who have this clearance you know what i mean versus one million at the bottom yeah makes sense yeah david says that the government had known about uaps and non-human intelligence for a very long time and they've been covering it up ever since here's what he said in the hearing well, evidence of extraterrestrial, otherwise unexplained forms of intelligence? And if so, when do you think this first occurred? Uh, I like to use the term non-human. I don't like to denote origin. Keeps the aperture open, both scientifically. Right. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, like I've dis discussed publicly uh, previously in 1930s. So back to what we were talking about earlier in mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. David says this program has been kept very secret, but there are documents out there for people with the proper security clearance. They just have to know where to look. And David told the reps he could steer them in that direction. Here's what he told AOC. For the record, if you were me, where would you look? Titles, programs, departments, regions, if you could just name anything. Um, and I, I put that as an open question to the three of you. I'd be happy to give you that in a closed environment. I can tell you specifically. Thank you. Wow. Um, Commander Fravor? And I would say, and I've told people that you, you have to know where to look. They're not going to divulge it to you because of the classification levels. But if you know where to look and who to talk to, which is exactly what Mr. Grush can point you, then you, then you have them. Okay. Mr. Graves? I was an operator, so I was defending on folks like Mr. Grush to do that homework. Okay. Thank you very much. I yield back to the chair. So as you just saw, the other two individuals that were testifying in this hearing were U.S. fighter pilot Brian Graves and Commander Fravor, David Fravor, uh, who was on the USS Nimitz uh, during that UAP encounter. And both of them also gave some testimony. Here's Ryan Graves' testimony. What percentage of UAP sightings, in your belief, go unreported by our pilots? This is an approximation based off of my personal experience speaking with a number of pilots, but I would estimate we're somewhere near 5% reporting, perhaps. So like 95% basically don't report seeing UAPs. That's just my personal estimate. Can you please explain to me in detail the event that occurred at Vandenberg Air Force Base? Certainly. Uh, in the 2003 time frame, uh, a large group of Boeing contractors were operating near one of the launch facilities at Vandenberg Air Force Base when they observed a very large 100-yard sided uh, red square uh, approach the base from the ocean and hover at low altitude over one of the launch facilities. Um, this object remained for about 45 seconds or so before darting off over the mountains. Um, there was a similar event within 24 hours later in the evening. Uh, this was a morning event, uh, I believe 8.45 in the morning. Later in the evening, post-sunset, 
Uh, there were uh, reports of other sightings on base, uh, including some aggressive behaviors. Uh, these objects were approaching some of the security guards at rapid speeds uh, before darting off. Uh, and this is information that was received through one of the uh, witnesses that have approached me at Americans for Safe Aerospace. Was this documented in any official form, whether it was a police blotter? Yes, they had uh, official documentation and records from the event that the witness uh, held over the years. And I'm not going to ask you to do it right now for time reasons, but you would be able to sketch what was witnessed, correct? And you've have you seen that before on any other equipment and or during your flight time? I have not seen what they've described. Um, this object was uh, estimated to be almost the size of a football field, um, and I have not seen anything personally that large. Fucking football field. Red square, 100 yards. Whoa. Wow. What's so interesting is the more and more we hear about this and learn about this, the more we realize that a lot of these things are coming out of the ocean. Yeah. That's wild to me. Like, mm -hmm. cause what better place for them to, you know, yeah. Make so conduct sense, business right? than under the ocean where we aren't. Mm -hmm. We've That's explored what, what is it? 5% yeah, of the ocean? Yeah, it's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's listen to some of Commander Fravor's testimony now. A few questions for Mr. Favor. As an expert naval aviator, have you ever seen an object that looked and moved like the Tic Tac UAP? No. Did the Tic Tac UAP move in such a way that defied the laws of physics? The way we understand them, yes. Many dismiss UAP reports as classified weapons testing by our own government, but in your experience as a pilot, does our government typically test advanced weapon systems right next to multi-million dollar jets without informing our pilots? No, we have test ranges for that. It took over 15 years for your encounter with the Tic Tac to be declassified. Do you feel there was a good reason to prevent lawmakers from having access to this footage? No, I just think it was ignored when it happened, and it just sat somewhere in a file. Love that. Ryan also okay. had a lot to say to the press about how UAP sightings are handled by the military. He also responds to the question of whether or not evidence is being destroyed to protect reputations. Here's Ryan Graves saying that UAPs are spotted on a daily basis. I think a lot of people think, oh, UFO, it's, you know, it's just one of those science fiction things. You have seen one with your own two eyes. And as we just heard from your testimony yesterday, a lot of commercial pilots and military pilots see them all the time. It's not quite as rare as, as uh, at least I thought before I joined the Navy. Uh, but, you know, we would start seeing objects uh, pretty much on a daily basis once we upgraded our radar systems to a more advanced system. We then correlated those with other systems on our jet. And eventually we saw them with our own eyeballs. Uh, they look like dark gray or black cubes inside of a clear sphere. Um, and we were always hitting these objects. You got within 50 feet of one of these things. So describe describe the last time you saw one. Well, I did not get within 50 feet, believe it or not. Uh, a colleague in my squadron uh, had a near midair with one of these objects where they were flying into the entry point to our area. Uh, this object went between two F-18s on the way in. Uh, within 50 feet. Uh, that was actually the first time we were able to gain a, a visual sighting of the object. Uh, myself and others, we would try to fly up to these objects within about 500 feet for safety reasons. Um, and they were very difficult to spot. Uh, but since since we uh, started having this problem initially, uh, more and more pilots from the military have come forward. And I've been speaking with pilots who are still seeing these almost a decade later in the same place. Your experience with watching these things, did they do stuff that is is absolutely impossible for any spacecraft on Earth to do? Well, we don't have an explanation for how they're behaving that way. We would see objects with no wings, no uh, exhaust coming out, no obvious propulsion signs, and yet they'd still be able to stay completely stationary in very high winds, Category 4 hurricane winds, wow. or accelerate then to Mach 2. Uh, and these are spherical objects, very uh, non aerodynamic shapes. I'm a former uh, mechanical and aerospace engineer before I joined the Navy. Uh, that's not the shape you make a, uh, a supersonic uh, aircraft out of. So yes, we don't, we don't know what they are. We don't know how they're performing and they're doing it all day, um, exhibiting very aggressive and high energy maneuvers. They also, I, I, a lot of times you see them over water and some people say that they actually go in the water as well. Did you see any experience of, have any experience of that? 
That that's what we call a uh, trans uh, medium behavior. So object going from say space to air or air to water. Uh, the F eighteen is not equipped with sensors to be able to accurately or cleanly see that transition. We would see uh, objects near the water and then perhaps they would be gone. Uh, but to say what uh, they actually happened during that transition, we just don't have the tool to do that. Wow, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Confirms a lot of shit we've talked about. So here's uh, Ryan again on potential destroyed evidence. You know, we were told by pilots time and time again that they'll destroy the evidence on the on the the footage by just hitting this hitting it with their knee, the the camera apparatus, so that it destroys it. Because in fact, when they get back to the base. They'll be pulled off the flight line. They'll have a they'll have a blemish on their record, and they'll be interrogated for eight hours. Lieutenant Graves, have you ever heard of that happening? Pilots actually destroying their own videotape footage of encounters with UAPs? Well, I can't say that was uh, my personal experience in the Navy back in the 2014-2015 time period. We do regularly uh, delete our classified material and reuse tapes, uh, but I don't think that's what uh, the congressman was referring to. In fact, uh, Representative Gates uh, went down to Eglin Air Force Base, I understand, from the hearing, uh, and it seems some of the pilots he met with were experiencing some uh, issues, and they did not seem to have the proper protocols for reporting it as a practical safety issue. I wouldn't be surprised if that's yeah. true, though, that they would, instead of, like, incentivize you to gather that they yeah. interrogate you, pull you off of mm-hmm. your flight line, and try to ruin your career as a result. Yeah. It's wild. As many of you know, Kendall and I are big animal lovers. We have a lot of pets. Ten. Ten. Ten pets. Believe it or not. It's insane. That's the real number. All mammals. And we've got three kitty cats that we absolutely love. They're our OGs. Yeah, we've they've been with us years. a long time. And they're starting to get up there in age. So, you know, we're starting to think more and more about their health. Yep. And for the longest time, these cats preferred to eat the nastiest, mm-hmm. smelliest, Lowest quality possible. Lowest quality cat food. We would try to get them nicer brands and they just weren't into it. Well, thanks to Smalls, that day has finally come. And they are absolutely obsessed with Smalls. They really, really love it. They love it. They get very excited for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've had to get used to the change from the the tin can to opening up up the The sound. The sound has (laughs) changed a bit, but the smell doesn't smell bad to us. But to them, it smells delicious. They come a running. Mm-hmm. when I open up the packet yep. of the Smalls cat food. Mm-hmm. It is protein packed, which is very important for kitties. Some of our kitties are, are a little skinny. Well, actually only one of them is, is on the thinner side. The other two um, are- uh, He's a skinny legend. He's a skinny legend for sure. Tucker, shout out Tucker. Smalls <laughs> cat food, game changer. Not only do they eat it all up, it's always gone the next morning when I go into Um, let them out of their little room that they hang out in at night. So you might be wondering, well, what's different about Smalls, Josh? Why why would I want to give my cat Smalls over the traditional cat kibble? Well, like I said, they're protein packed. A lot of other cat food is not. And a lot of those other cat foods out there put mysterious meat byproducts in there, artificial flavoring and preservatives with names that I don't even want to try to pronounce. And it just smells disgusting. But after making the switch to Smalls, 78% of cat owners have reported their cats had shinier and softer fur, and 90% reported overall health improvements, which is a huge, huge deal. And the team at Smalls is so confident that your cat will love their food that you can try it risk-free. That means that they will refund you if your cat won't eat their food. And remember, higher quality ingredients mean a healthier, happier life for your kitty. So head to smalls.com slash milehire and use promo code milehire at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code MILEHIGHER for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code MILEHIGHER for 50% off your first order, plus free shipping. So the Pentagon, like we said, has said that David Grush's claims are false. They say that there is no evidence, they have no evidence of space aliens or crashed saucer programs. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer sponsored an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act that would declassify government records related to UAPs. So did anyone get a skiff meeting with David Grush? Not yet, as far as we know, but Kristen Gillibrand ha- is trying to get a public and private meeting with him at this point. Um, so obviously the UFO community as a whole has had a lot to say about this hearing. 
Let's hear from one of our favorites, Dr. Greer. What stood out most to you today? Well, I think it's really gratifying. You know, we've been, I've been briefing people like the CIA director for Bill Clinton since uh, 1993 and been recommending hearings like this, open hearings. I will say there are a few points that need to be explored. One is uh, Mr. Grush actually can speak about anything he found out about these projects because we can prove in a court of law that they've been run illegally. In other words, senior people in the White House, Pentagon, Congress, Senate Intelligence Committees that I've met with have been denied access. So therefore, the National Security Act is vitiated in terms of secrecy so long as those programs are being run illegally, and they are being run illegally. I can say that with some direct authority. And secondly, I think it's very important for people to understand there are two types of UAPs. There are the man-made ones, no question. My uncle was lifetime Northrop Grumman, worked on the lunar lander module. I think we have to understand that a significant part of the phenomenon is actually clandestine but illegally managed human reverse engineered advanced technologies, as they're called ATs. Uh, and some are non-human intelligence, so there's no question. So I think this needs to begin to be looked at more critically in terms of what part of the phenomenon falls under which category very very mm -hmm. important because that i believe that 100 percent. there's even declassified cia documents i've talked about before on here that they were literally doing fake alien abductions yep like clandestine alien abductions in brazil in south america mm -hmm. and this is in government docs so tells you everything you need to, need to know here's um jeremy corbell yeah if you're thoughts. not familiar with jeremy corbell that's another yeah. Individual we'd love to have on the show at some mm -hmm. point. Um, he's been studying this for a long, long time. He's he made a number of different documentaries. He did the Bob Lazar documentary, if yep. you remember. Yep. Here's what he had to say. Jeremy, thanks so much for joining us. I got to say, though, man, pilots seeing weird stuff flying around in the sky is one thing. But someone coming along and basically saying what sounds like exactly all of the UFO crash conspiracies I've ever heard growing up. And then saying, I can only share details in a skiff with people who have clearance like... Come on. Uh, what's your take on that? Gotti, I think you know my take, which is that it wouldn't be shocking if you had been paying attention. Why David Grush can't say these things in public realms is because he's a whistleblower. He is exposing something that's been going on a long time. And I will tell you, I was there all day, days before, help set this up. They wouldn't allow for a secure facility for him to speak yet, just today. So you have to understand, it's only shocking if you haven't been paying attention. Today was a historic day, Gotti, and I think you understand why. We have never had people of this credential and credibility, not just saying they saw things with their eyes, but backed up by sensor data. These aren't just pilots saying they saw something. These are pilots testifying to what's already known. Unbelievable. I know. I don't think a lot of people understand how monumental this no. actually was. No, I mean, unless you really understand the very, you know, the timeline of UFOlogy, it's hard to really see the significance. But if you do understand, you know, if you're a fan of the show, you know that this mm -hmm. is major, major news revelation. This is the beginning, folks, I think of. I know. Where are we going to go? I was just saying off camera, like. What are we going to be talking about on this show in five years? The next couple of years are going to be really interesting. Like buckle the fuck up. Yeah, I think we're living in like some of the most important times in human history. Uh -huh. I honestly believe that. And I feel privileged to be alive mm -hmm. to experience this. I do and too. I just hope that I get to see what this is and experience it firsthand. Like, I seriously do. Like, I, I literally lay in bed at night and I'm like, please come and get <laughs> he me. He does. Like, I <laughs> come really, and get me. I want to experience this non human Ugh, intelligence. I, I wish I was like that, but especially somebody who was programmed a certain type of way throughout my life, like, this will be the clarity that I need to know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I get that I am on the right track because I don't know. it will, the paradigm shift here is so major in every way shape or form it flips everything on its head our government the way that our yeah, the way yeah. that we go about our daily lives yep. our spirituality all of it is completely flipped on its head when we all experience this firsthand for the first time and 
get to see with their own eyes that we are not alone, that we are perhaps surrounded by life in the universe, that they've been here probably for longer than we have. They probably know far more. I mean, wouldn't you like to pick the brains of some of these non-human intelligence and ask them questions about yeah, maybe they have they the answers to our origins. Where did we come from? Yeah, they probably How did. did life start on this earth? Mm -hmm. Maybe they brought us here. I mean, the, the mm -hmm. possibilities are endless. Yeah, they really are. I don't know. There's, there's just a part of me that's extremely fearful of all that. There is the fear of the malevolent species and what that could mean and what that could look like. Could that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I will also worry about the fact that there's also a possibility since the government's had this technology that they try to fake some sort of mm -hmm. invasion that looks alien, but it's not. It's yeah. them How can this or be some other group us? Yeah, to sure. try to, you know, get that war machine going again in outer space or all mm -hmm. around us. I mean, that's that's the scary part of it is that we really don't know which direction it'll go. God, it makes everything that I feel anxious about on the day to day basis seem like incredibly stupid and insignificant. Yeah makes me feel insignificant. I think that's what it is for me is as interested in, as I am in all of this and how much I want answers. There's just a part of me that wants to live in comfortability and not know things. That's I want to okay. be a sheep. I think a lot of people <laughs> I'm scared. I think a lot of people are like that. And that's I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's that's okay. It's okay to feel like yeah. that. Natural to feel like that. Yeah. I think I'm very split 50-50 when it comes to it. Like I could just also never know. But then it would, you know, it drives me crazy not knowing. We want to know the answers. But in the end, I think you'll want to know. But do I want to know how it's going to change everything? Do I want to actually see that play out and have my life change and well, I think everything that I've accepted and and expected for my future be completely altered? I understand that because I think the one, the biggest thing is like, if there is this paradigm shift, if everything gets flipped on its head, I worry and I feel in my heart that it's not going to be a peaceful transition. That's, no. And right. that's, that's what really, if there's anything I fear, it's that. It's, it's right, fearing right. those that are in power now are not going to want this to go down in any way, shape or form that allows the rest of us to be elevated above them or be at the same level as, as them going forward into the future as, as mm -hmm. a species. And I think that is what scares me is that there inevitably will be some form of revolution, mm -hmm. violence. I'm that afraid breaks out. of people too. Just and the what average people will do. Sure. And what people, how people their react. minds, doing crazy it, stuff. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's also mm -hmm. a possibility. And just as a parent, I, my, perception of everything is so different now i'm kind of like living in simplicity not knowing i don't know i'm afraid of people i'm afraid of society changing as much as i know we need it we need to break through and it's not going to be easy i'm like maybe that can happen like after i die because <laughs> i don't know it's so fucking scary i think but it could if be you have for no the, fear about this meant... and you like, are, you've got to be, you have to have some fear somewhere inside of you, every single person. What right? if it meant, though, like maybe there'll be a, a, a rough transition, but what if it meant that our daughter, our grandkids, and their kids live in a much better world? That's true. And maybe we take one for the team. And the rest of the people on this planet live in a better world where there, it does eliminate a lot of the, the issues that we face as a, as a, as a species of, you know, people don't have, places to live people don't have access to energy and food and clean water and all these things and our planet's dying and all these things what if those issues were solved but we had to go through this trying time to get there in my mind as hard as that would be and as scary as that is to think about i'm willing to go through that for the greater good of of humanity and this planet and everybody else we might share it with if that means because Ultimately, you have to, I think when you look at this issue, you have to look within yourself as well. And you have to look at what you believe spiritually, because I think ultimately it comes back to spirituality and what you believe. And if you believe that after you die, this is the end, then maybe that's a very scary thought. But if you believe that perhaps we come back and re-experience another chapter of this, of this planet or somewhere else in this universe, then wouldn't you want to come back in a, in a 
space as perhaps better than the one that you left. No, when you put it like that, for sure. That's the way I look at it, at least, is like, if I leave this a better place than when I got here, the hope is, is that when I come back in whatever form that is, whatever mm -hmm. location that mm -hmm. is in this vast universe, I hope that it's a better place than I left. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's not guaranteed. And that's what I struggle with. It's not guaranteed, but... All I know is now. That's true. Well. Also, though, I think there's like something to be said about, you just said, all I know is now. And that's, I think, a great way to try and live your life day to day is like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know what could happen. Yeah, maybe something insane happens in your lifetime. Maybe it doesn't, but like obsessing over it doesn't really change the outcome either way. Like what's mm -hmm. going to happen, it's going to happen. So I think that sometimes it's worth trying to remind yourself that, you know, you need to just take it day by day and not get so worked up in what could happen because you really have no idea. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And there's something almost humbling and peaceful about knowing, like, what you have control over in this exact moment and, you know, relying on, on that in a sense. Well, I think that's really the way I've had to approach this entire journey of being exposed to all these things that I never knew about before, you know, a few years before we started this show, I started learning more and being more open to things that made me uncomfortable. And I've had to just learn how to carp, carp, and carp, carp, <laughs> compartmentalize. compartmentalize. That Carpment. is the word of the day. <laughs> I've had to like stick it somewhere in my brain yeah. to function. You know, I know these things. I don't obsess over them. I, I they pop in here and sure. there. Um, sometimes like right now more than others, yeah. it's more there. Right. But yeah, it's kind of just like one of those things where you're, you're here for the ride. There's nowhere else to go and nothing to do. So you might as well just buckle in and try to manage. Well, you got to release control. Yeah. And, and I don't have like no that. Control I'm a control freak. So. Well, humans happens. in nature are control freaks. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. We want comfortability and familiarity. Yep. And what we already know. Yeah. But we got to be prepared to let all that go. Well, and just that's hard. float on down the stream <laughs> with our alien brethren. <laughs> but are they brethren? Well, if they vaporize us, there's nothing we can do about that. Hey, so. That's you know. true. But they could be nice. They could come down. We could smoke a blunt with them. And that'd be dude, so Could you yeah. imagine? <laughs> that's could what I want. Can imagine? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like that one guy, Chad Kroger, yeah. at the yeah. local California <laughs> hearing. Can we play that just to end on a little fun note? Yeah. Oh my God. This was, I just loved this so much. Shout out to Chad Kroger. Is that his name? Do I don't know. know. Chad Kroger? I, honestly, I feel like he probably made that up. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that is his name. No, I don't think No, so. <laughs> definitely not. Oh, is it? Oh, the... Surfer Bro hilariously oh, no, trolls Chad LA Kroger. City Council. Chad Kroger. Identify yourself. What up, council? My name is Chad Kroger. Um, I'm an activist and house party enthusiast. House Over the past enthusiast. week, I've been in a state of deep despair upon hearing the news that L.A. is trying to outlaw house parties in the Hollywood Hills. I am here determined to stop this future atrocity. Atrox. House parties were the bedrock of my development as a young man Is this man the in one? Wait, I think it's a different one. I think he's done this multiple times. Well, shouts out. Chad's been... Oh, defending oh, house three. parties. Oh, yeah, 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 pull it up on my Twitter. I posted it. Oh, this guy does multiple. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's this, an active citizen. The city council's like, oh he's god, not Chad Kroger talk. again. There he is. That's it. What yep. up, council? My name is Chad Kroger, and I've never been more stoked to speak to y'all. <laughs> aliens are real. More aliens are coming. That's why I'm proposing that the city of Los Angeles set up a welcome party for our new green buddies. <laughs> That's right, baby. This needs to be the ultimate rager. We need to have a DJ. I think Zed would crush it. <laughs> Imagine aliens cruising in to clarity, bumping on the speaks. Then for <laughs> catering, I'm thinking Pedro's Tacos. We've got to support local cuisine. Uh, and small biz, what up? Uh, we gotta have a good ratio. So maybe councilman, you could fly in some pro volleyball players. That'd be sick. Good ratio. And then we gotta be sponsored by Devs Liquor. Endless supply of vodka. That's crush. Finally, I think we need a surprise appearance by Tom DeLong from Blink One Eight Two. We owe that dude a massive apology. Sorry, Tom. And uh, everyone Sorry, be chill too. Tom. We can't all be like, "Who do you know here?" We gotta treat these dudes like they grew here, not like they flew here. Guys, <laughs> I am so stoked. <laughs> all right, late. What up? All right, late. <laughs> if there's I a definition him. of California bro, that is it right there. Okay. That's like what everybody Krush. thinks. Of. I want, I want Chad Kroger on the show. Hell Let's yeah. fly him out. Oh my God.
Chad, if you're listening, we want you. Okay. I think that's going to be it for today. There's so much more we could get into. We could sit here literally hours. all day. Yeah, um, we've already been sitting here for a good two hours or so. But it's hopefully you know, that helps. The, the ride is only uh, getting started. So I'm sure we'll Buckle have up. many more interesting discussions. Hopefully the up next one we do, higher. it's like, all right, they've revealed themselves. Step two. <laughs> what do we what do we think? I don't know if I'm ready for that. Mm, Give me at least I think we have a ways to go years. before that happens. Yeah. I'm going to just keep hoping and praying for them to come visit me. I want them to come. I want them so to show what? up in my bedroom. That's Stop it. I live in there too. In bedroom, Last night though? it was pitch dark and I was just like, oh, is that a shadow figure in the corner oh my God. coming to visit? I just want You better that. stop that shit right now. Don't say that. Why? Because I am in there too. No, it's okay. They come in peace. No, they do not. Why not? No, you're just listening to your... He listens to ambient music as he falls asleep every night and you get trippy, I think. Yeah. and, or and it's like I, gummy and I, you take to sleep. And I do like, transcendental oh, yeah, meditation attempting to communicate. Oh my God. Okay. We love that for you. All <laughs> right. Hopefully well, you learned something. Let us know your thoughts on everything that we've discussed. We want to hear from you in the comments. Also, if you are an audio listener, you can go to our Instagram account, which is Janelle, what is it? Malhar Pod. Malhar Pod. Malhar yeah. Pod. And you can let us know what you think there. Um, we'd love to have, you know, more conversations with you guys on social media. And hear all of your thoughts, because I know you guys are going to be all over the board on this. There are so many different takes to be had. If you straight up think all of it's bullshit and there are no aliens, I really want to defend you. yourself. Yeah, let's let's go <laughs> because <laughs> let's go. you are not welcome here. Oh, oh stop it, JK. You're welcome yeah. here. I do actually. I'm very curious to hear from our more religious uh, subscribers out there, um, listeners who like. How is this? How are you doing? I'm curious, like if this is altering what you think, or if you, Demons. or if you still feel, yeah, or if you have a way of explaining it, or if this makes sense to you, or you just completely think it's all bullshit. I mean, I just, I just, I'm curious how you guys are doing. I did see someone online that uh, identifies as a Catholic who said that they thought the whole thing was a psyop to, mm. like, turn people away from the faith. So mm. that was just a that's thing. one could be. No one knows, right? <laughs> So, yeah, let us know your thoughts, and we'll be back next week. Thanks for going to Mile Higher with us today. Also, did you like our matching outfits? We did not plan that. <laughs> when do you Even left though we share your, a you, closet. Yeah, I was saying, when you came downstairs. Well, I yeah, got, I was I in the got kitchen. dressed first today. He did. I put it on He was first. on a call. She must have saw me. He was like, I was in the kitchen. I didn't. I just thought, I'm going to wear one of our alien shirts today. Yeah, because it's the, the Infinite Campfire one. Just no that. longer available. You guys nope. sold that Limited shit out time. fast. Um, but, yeah, he walked downstairs. I saw him, and I... First told him to change, but then our nanny was like, no, you guys should just rock it. All it's right. cute. <laughs> We're rocking it. Matching. Ready okay. for alien. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Until then. Keep on taking your mind a, a mile, mile higher. higher.